How's it going everyone? It's Adam from Life of Adam and today I'm back with a brand new life grading tip video. If you guys are new to the channel, make a bunch of life grading content about how to pass the course, how to pass the pretest, basically everything you need to know about becoming a successful life guard. So definitely consider subscribing and liking the video if you're new to the channel. Now today we're gonna to be talking about the main reasons why people fail the life grading course. I'm gonna be talking about all the areas of the course, including the beginning, the pretest, the middle stages like the water rescues, learning CPR, and the final stages, which is the written exams, the CPR exams and just making sure all that material you learned stuck with you and you actually know it. Now the first thing, the reason why people fail the lifeguarding course is that they underestimate their water pretest and the swimming. Lifeguarding is a type of job where you can't just walk into a facility and say, hey, I want a lifeguard. They give you a shirt, they give you a whistle and they say, okay, go watch that pool. You have to prove that you're a good enough swimmer. And the way they filter out skill levels for you to be able to become a lifeguard is with the pretest. So a 300 yard swim for like a beginner to intermediate swimmer is a long swim. So you have to make sure that before you spend the money and you pay a lifeguard instructor to give you the lifeguard certification and give you the course, make sure you can do it on your own. Go to a public pool near you, use my videos because I basically talk about all the different pretests and what they consist of and practice it. So time yourself when you're treading with no hands. Count how many laps you can do, make sure that you're pacing yourself and you're doing two different strokes. And also do the brick dive. A lot of public pools have the bricks themselves because they do like swim team and stuff. So you can just ask to borrow them and just practice. So like one of the most common reasons why people fail is they underestimate how long the 300 meter swim is and how much swimming ability and stamina you need to pass that section. So now let's say you're a really good swimmer. A really common way people fail the pretest is that they go too fast too early. They just blow all their energy. So I have definitely seen people before that are excellent swimmers. They have like amazing form. They're in very good shape, but they go so fast thinking that's a race to start or they like touch the sidewalls for just a little second that will instantly fail you. You cannot touch the sidewalls. The only walls you can touch are the end walls where you kind of grab it and you can push off. So do not think it's a race. So do not go for your like personal best for speed. Pace yourself, take your time, because even if you're a really good swimmer, if you go too fast to start, let's say you're next to someone who's really fast and you're trying to keep up, then that's how you're gonna fail because you're not gonna have the energy or, and then you're gonna have to do it again. Now the middle section of the course when you do the water rescues and you learn CPR is relatively safe because you're learning new things. They don't expect you to know it or get everything right away. So there's not really a lot of things you can do to fail in that section. It's a pretty, it's like a safe zone. The pretest allows you to get there. It's a learning period. And when you get to the assessment and the evaluation phase, which is like the final tests and they wanna see how you do because all the things that you learned in the middle of the course didn't stick with you they will know right away. Now for the CPR phase, a really common way people fail is that they do not memorize it. They don't put the time into learning all the steps. It's very important to understand each step and to know how to proceed given all these different types of scenarios. I'm talking rescue breathing, choking victim, what to do for a child, an infant, an adult. You have to know every single thing, what to do at every single moment. And a way to help you memorize it is by writing things down and practicing. When I took the lifeguarding course, the way I remembered how to do each step and what to do for a child, infant, and adult, given the scenario, was using a pillow in my living room. I would pretend that, okay, this per this victim didn't have a pulse, was not breathing. I would practice doing CPR. I would practice the hand placement and intertwining the fingers and going right down on the sternum. And they'll tell you the specific details because you don't wanna be compressing full force like you do for a big adult on like a small child. So they'll tell you all the details and where to put your hands and stuff and how to check for pulse and breathing and how to check for a general assessment. But you have to put in the effort to memorize it because if you don't memorize it, when they have you for a mock exam, you won't be able to pass and they'll have you do it over and over and over again, which I do not want you guys to jeopardize your life grand course because you've already got to this point. You already put in all the hours to get to this point. So you wanna make the most of it. So put in the time to memorize. Now for the final exam, it also takes a lot of memorization. A lot of the questions are common sense, but do not fall into the trap of going on Quizlet and looking at all the questions on Quizlet because if you're taking a life grand course in person, if you try to look at your phone or try to rely on Quizlet, they'll fail you right away. You have to put in the effort of understanding terminology and definitions and not try to finesse and just like look at Quizlet, read through all the questions like, oh, it's A, it's B, it's A. And then going to the test thinking, oh, I practiced on this Quizlet page. I covered my hand on the string and I got all the answers right. It's not the same. A lot of the questions are different. It helps you. It definitely helps to go through Quizlets and go through flashcards, but don't bank on those questions being the actual questions on the exam. Now, this is just a bonus tip. You might be thinking, okay, what happens if you're at the lifeguarding course? You're training to become a lifeguard 
and then you need help in the water. Let's say like you run out of energy or like you're stuck in the middle of the pool or let's say you have a foot cramp and you can't touch the wall. Like who comes in to save you? Is there a lifeguards on duty watching the lifeguard course? And the answer is the, the instructor actually is like the lifeguard on duty. So the reason why I'm mentioning this is because when you're doing the water rescues and you're practicing in the pool, make sure that you save some energy and you're close to the wall and you don't overdo yourself because if you struggle and if they need to save you, I'm not really sure what the consequences are. That will very much jeopardize their confidence in giving you a certification. So I'm not sure if it's like an automatic fail, but just make sure that you don't need to be saved and make sure you do things the right way. Because if I was in the position of the lifeguard instructor and I saw one of my students like struggle in the water and I had to save them, that would very much ruin my confidence in them in terms of their swimming ability. So just make sure you don't go into that situation and just like if you're tired, grab the wall. If they ask you to do something, like, oh, go save this person, just say kind of like 30 seconds or whatever and they'll give it to you. It's like, it's not the pretest. It's not like you're grabbing the sidewall in the middle of your lap. It's like the practicing water skills section. So if you're tired, just grab the wall and relax for a bit. Do not try to overdo yourself. Definitely drink a lot of water because if they need to save you, your chances of passing the overall course takes a massive hit. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely like and subscribe if you're new to the channel and I'll see you all in the next lifeguard tip video. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out.